Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're talking about Playstar 2023. There are a few things that have changed, but the essence of the event still remains the same. Head on over to Cedas, fast travel to Nakak. Like so, you're gonna have a brand new faction, or an old faction if you did operational supply before, or better said, if you did this event before. Unfortunately, even though it's been years, Digital Extreme still does not allow us to skip over the commentary that Nakak has, so... Hit up operational supply, you'll see you have three levels, champion is the highest one, defender the second and first one is going to be collaborator, you're going to be able to farm up to half a million standing, so you can basically stack your standing, when it comes to the rewards you get some fireworks, some emblems, Cedar's Wisp, some jewels, some guts from fish, but more importantly, you get yourself the Exodia Contagion and Exodia Epidemic Arcanes, these are going to be 5000 standing a pop. You get the ghoul saw from this one as well, though bear in mind it can be more advantageous to get the ghoul saw from your dojo. From your clan dojo what you can do is fast travel to the Ben Kids Bash Lab if you have it built and here you can get yourself the ghoul saw the grip essentially all of the components. Now you're going to be looking at I don't know credits 15,000 a pop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so that's going to be 75,000 credits if you want to purchase it from your dojo and you don't want to spend standing during Plague Star. You can also get Butcher's Reverie from this one for 3,000 standing and the parts are 4,000 a pop and you got 5 of them in total so that's going to be 2,000 plus another 3,000 for Butcher's Reverie 2,300. Alternatively Butcher's Reverie can be farmed from the game it can drop from Ghoul Rictus but the drop chance is not fantastic I would say Simply spend the standing and get it during Operation Plague Star. Eidolon Phylaxis should be the first thing you buy if you never did the event. Essentially, this one will allow you to unlock or better said play the harder difficulties of the bounties. You're also going to be needing Infested Catalyst and for that one, once again, we go to our dojo, fast travel to the bio lab, and you will find it right here. Make sure you craft a couple in your foundry, both Infested Catalyst and the Eidolon Phylaxis. Essentially, you're going to be using one and one every time you do the medium bounty or the steel path versions. And you'll see exactly what I mean just a tad later. Forma is the star of the show. As per usual, when it comes to Forma, this is the reason why a lot of veterans do this. You're looking at 3,000 standing and 5,000 credits a pop. And you can buy as many as you want, depending on how much standing you have. You also get the Snipe Throne Blueprint, which is Mastery Fodder, and the Ether Dagger Blueprint, which is also mostly Mastery Fodder. In addition, you also get Saw Part for the these things basically if you ever wanted to build saws this is definitely the time to get them you can get some additional blueprints like i have just to have reserves in case this meta changes or anything like that sacrifice used to be meta once upon a time not really the case anymore it's still something i would like to have as for fulmination make sure you get the prime fulmination from battle kit here instead now after you're done with that head on over to Konzu. you can use the fast travel system like Sue. Thankfully, his commentary can be skipped and you go to bounties and you're going to have three versions of the bounties. You have the normal one, which will grant you 1000 standing as a base, 3000 standing for the harder one, which is between level 55 and 65. And finally, the steel path version, which is the new version between level 100 and 110, yielding the most amount of standing. And if you want to seriously farm, this is the way you're going to be going, simply because it can be completed as fast as the intermediate one but you're going to be getting more standing so if you want a hardcore farmer this is the way to go and that's what we're going to be doing next i'm going to take you through the entire mission with my team so you know exactly what you need to do to optimize these runs what to look out for and what not first of all let's talk a little bit about team composition we got a revenant a vault a wisp and a nova however these are not set in stone you can change your composition but there are a few key points that you should be aware of first of all the weapons that you're going to be bringing here should be bullet hole style of weapons that are built for flat corrosive damage and you should fully armor strip your target. I'm talking about the Hemocyte at the end. But before I get ahead of myself, as soon as you spawn in, there are three possible locations for the toxin. Three spawn locations. One to the right, one in the center and one to the left. The one on the right is usually the one I take. Talk to your teammates and tell them, hey, let's split up. I'll go right, you go left, and uh, you go down the middle. So you split up as soon as you spawn into the mission. This should mean that should be fastest to get the whole toxin thing. If you're going to be choosing a Warframe based on this, keep in mind that Titania is absolutely MVP for something like this. So she's going to have an easier time flying down these corridors and getting you that uh, toxin. Of course, you can also use your Operator and your Void. I keep wanting to say Void Dash, but this is like the Void Sling thing, right? Pick up the toxin and get out of the cave as fast as possible. Keep in mind that some of these caves are a bit, well, a bit roundabout. And if you never did this before, you might be getting lost. As soon as you enter the cave, what you can do, a little trick is to mark the ground at your feet. So you know exactly which way to go. 
it's not 100% necessary. And again, if you got experience with the event, you shouldn't need it. But if you don't, it'll help you a lot. Exit, go Arcwing, and just dash through to the marked points. You see my friends have marked points on the map. Those are mixer location. In the past, this is where we used to mix this toxin together with Eidolon, Palaxis, and Infested Catalyst. These are no longer required, but you just need them to have them built in your Warframe inventory, not in your gear wheel or anything of the sort, to access the medium difficulty and the steel path difficulty of the mission. Go down, and then put it into the mixer. This part of the mission unfortunately cannot be rushed. Essentially what you get is what you see. You simply gotta wait the full 3 minutes for the toxin to be ready. At this point you can do whatever. Spin for the win. As you can see, there's about a minute left on the timer. Usually, in a team, what we do on about 30 seconds, everybody leaves except the one guy that's going to be picking up the toxin, which is already mixed at this point, and they are looking for the little drone where we're going to have to input that toxin. Usually, it spawns roughly around the mixer point, but not always. This is the part where you should have a Nova or a Loki to teleport the little drone around so you can win a lot of time. These are huge gains in terms of time. So again, a Nova, a Loki, a Zephyr, they will work to speed up the mission as well as a very fast vault because the speed will uh, essentially translate to the little drone as well, as you will see in a couple of seconds. Three, two, one, pick it up. If you haven't found it by this point, just wait for the bounty to get marked. It shouldn't take too long. There you go. This is when you can have like huge gains in terms of time. Oh, by the way, you don't need to get off your arc wing to input it into the drone. Now, speed from Vault and teleports from Nova. Look at that teleport. Beautiful. Fantastic. That was like 100 meters easy. Did it get stuck? Not a problem. Nova to the rescue. Or is it stuck? Is it? No? Did it get out? I think it did. Sometimes you should note this, that sometimes you can see the little drone go through the ground and it's bye bye And you need to reset the whole thing. In that case, I would recommend you pick up a long-range teleport Loki. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. Both Loki and Nova are a bit buggy. It doesn't always work out exactly the way you want to. But as you saw there, we had an absolutely huge gain in terms of time. Look at that Loki teleport. Hold on, hold on. Let me... There we go. I should be able to see that Loki teleport. There is a lot of trees, though. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of terrain. Don't worry, I trust this Loki. Come on, Loki. Yeah. Loki genius. Come on, Loki, before the drone dies. Yeah, nice. there we go. That's 100 meters. Loki going for the 200 meter teleport. Failed. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it again. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go for Here it. Go. Get it, Loki. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> nice one, Loki. One more time, baby. Come on. You got this. Oh, you want to zigzag it? Oh, wow. Okay. That was like, what? You put it here? Dude. <laughs> Why did you put it in the mountains, bro? Uh, line of sight. He, he wants to zigzag it. Closer. Oh, yeah, but when it's going down a hill, it bugs out. You know that. Yeah. See? That's like two bugs out in a row there yeah. from Loki. Just wait till it hits uh, level. Okay, show me. Show me what you can do, Nova. Oh, what? Did that, mm. that work no, for 20? I... Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. What the? Where the, where the fuck did it go? Wait, what? Wait, it's, it's going the wrong way. Oh, you! Where's nice. the guy that? Oh my God! It's still looping. It's looping. Yes. It's so derp. <laughs> When you're here, simply clear everything. Now, I want you to keep an eye on the left part of the screen, the Infested Purge. When you hit 25% stop, all DPS on the Infested, you want to stack them up so you get quickly from 25 to 50 after you fight Lefantis. He is the Hemo side, but I'm just going to call him Lefantis because basically that's what he is. 21, 29, stop. Wow. We essentially destroyed a whole bunch of pods with a single area of effect there and we shoot it up to 29%. Sometimes that happens. At this point, you gotta kill all the free heads. You shouldn't need anything to slow them down or stun them as long as you assign all your teams to heads. For example, we got two guys on the hard head, which is this head. Fully stripped, as you see. One guy on the easier head. That's the green one, that one. And finally, one guy on the yellow head. 
And as you can see, you should be able to absolutely annihilate them, no problem whatsoever. Our Wisp is using Pillage, yeah? 41, 45, just clear everything quickly. 50% stop DPS on 50%, do not kill any more infested at this point. Rinse and repeat. Again, we are armor stripping using our Wisp, she has Pillage on. And we are building our weapons, I'll show you an example of a build later on. Flat, corrosive, with the 90s, not the 60s. Two people on the hard head. One guy each on the other heads. Help out your team as fast as you can. Make sure your weapon has a huge magazine or fast reload or both. And as you can see, easy peasy poke. Or easy. Now, quick to 75%. Revenant is more than capable of absolutely annihilating everything around him in AoE fashion like this. 75%. Stop. Rinse and repeat. And essentially this is the whole mission. Perfect. Excellent, guys. The other one didn't even open up at this point. Sometimes a head doesn't open. Can't tell you exactly why, but it just doesn't want to. Maybe because it knows what's coming. And again, at 75%, we're gonna clear quickly to 100%. You don't need to stop DPS now on AoE, because it's the last one. And as soon as the last one falls, you can either pick up the Hemocyte, the Sistol, if that drops on the ground, or just forget about it and head to Extract as fast as you can. The Hemocyte that drops on the ground from the last one is only useful for making Dojo Trophies, which I'll show you a few. We have a ton of them, they don't really hold anything outside of EP. Excellent. Look at that. Done. Rush home. You can also scream Swaz Dula at this point, essentially. And that's pretty much it. That's gonna be an entire run. It took us 9 minutes and 20 seconds. 9.25, something like that, which is not bad. You can further optimize your time even more than this. But you get the general idea. Now, let's clarify a few things. Let's talk about team composition. You need an area of effect frame that's gonna be destroying everything really quickly. We choose Revenant. Revenant is somewhat controllable. Press your 4, you destroy everything. Don't press your 4, you don't destroy everything. Make sure that you don't hit those pods during Lefantis fights, yes? Because during Lephantis fights, you want to make sure they stack up as much as possible so you can area of effect them down and move to the next Lephantis. You get how that one works. Let's take a look at uh, how much did we get. In terms of standing, we got 3,875 in 9 minutes 51 seconds with the extraction that usually takes about 30 seconds or so depending on the connection and how garbage the net code is. Outside of that, back to the actual composition, one area of effect frame. It doesn't need to be Revenant. Whatever you prefer is totally fine. Bolt is fantastic for increasing the speed of the little drone and increasing the speed of your entire party. It's definitely a fantastic choice. It's not a must-have. What I will call a must-have is a Wisp. Wisp with her buffs, putting the Ficus down, 100% GG, no question. Our Wisp also has Pillage on, so she also takes care of the armor stripping. The armor stripping can also be done with a gunblade that actually has impact damage, yes, with shattering impact. You can also go that route. Finally, the Nova, Nova or Loki here, whatever you prefer. You can even use a Zephyr. We tested Loki, we tested Nova. The long and short of it is, it comes down to luck and both can bug. Nova can teleport the thing through the ground and then it's bye bye and Loki sometimes, especially when you're dealing with slopes, he just teleports to the drone and the drone doesn't teleport to him his location. So you're basically wasting a whole lot of time. It's really gonna come down to what you're more comfortable with. Technically, Nova should work better if she actually works and nothing bugs out. So bear that one in mind. Let's talk weapons. Yes, I'm gonna make things very simple. You might want to go for incarnate weapons because incarnate weapons were not available to us. Well, not these incarnate weapons were available to us last time when we played Blake Star. The thing is, when you shoot the heads of the beast, the Lephantis thing, you're not getting incarnate charge. You can choose Felarch styles of weapons. Speaking of the Felarch, the Felarch itself is fantastic. What I'm gonna be showcasing, what I showcased, however, is a normal, average, everyday weapon. That is the Tenant Flux Rifle. As for a secondary, the Piranha Prime will do the job just fine. From this point onwards, any type of bullet hose, any type of weapon that is capable of pulling a lot of damage instances into your target quickly. Yes, so you don't want the big bottom boom explosions. You don't want the big damage with a single projectile because of the mitigation that you get on those heads. Again, a lot of little damage instances on your target really quick, whatever weapon you desire. As you saw there, we absolutely murdered everything and this is the build that I use. Multi-shot, critical chance, critical damage, fire rate with the 90 mods and I also have 
this Riven. Critical chance multi shot minus zoom. Again, you're gonna be able to tear through him with a Piranha Prime. I think this one is gonna be like the most accessible. And again, the same goes as before. Flat damage, go for corrosive if you're gonna be stripping the armor of Lephantis. So if you head on over to the Hemo side, you will see that he has fossilized. Now keep in mind that the way that they arrange this. It looks like fossilized is the armor and infested sinew is the health. What in all actuality is the other way around. Fossilized is a health type and sinew is an armor type. So to make this very simple, if you're going to be armor stripping, go for corrosive, 75% damage. That's why you have the three little pluses. If you're not going to be stripping, go for radiation, 50% bonus damage. And you might think, oh, this makes a big difference. It does not. It does not make a big difference. The gains, quote unquote, are going to be a couple of seconds. It doesn't really matter all that much. So if it's hard for you to armor strip or whatever, simply build radiation, flat radiation, not with the 60s, with the 90s, and you're going to do just fine. Outside of that, you might be wondering about faction damage. Should I go for faction damage? Yeah, you can go for faction damage. It actually works because the target is classified as infested, but... In my tasting, it only provides a small damage uplift. When it comes to faction damage, it really provides a big punch when you're dealing with damage over time effects so it can properly double dip. This is not what we're doing here. Another option you have is to spawn your Void Rig and use something like the Mouse Salon. That's totally fine. You're going to be applying the same principle as before. If you're going to be armor stripping, make sure to build Corrosive Flat. If not, go for Radiation. And you can also use the Archibex to area of effect clear those infested. Those infested, even on the Steel Path, the hard mode, yes, they're not really that tough. So basically, a sneeze clears them out without any issue whatsoever. But yes, Void Rigs or Necromex, better said, are an option. You can go for these as well. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you don't need something super mega ultra hard to invest in or hard to find or incarnate this or incarnate that. Basically, the event itself is easily farmable as long as you have the knowledge. And of course, what am I going to do with all that standing? Well, it depends who you are and where you are in your Warframe journey and all whatnot. For me, there's not a whole lot of benefit outside of something like saw parts, which I already have, or something like Forma. You can buy as many Forma as you want to. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. If you got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If I don't get to them, somebody will. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, my name is Malazar, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and enable those notifications. Bye. Let's buy that Forma. Buy that Forma. How many Forma for Papa? Ooh, 15 Forma. And that took about an hour worth of farming or so.